All right, in this lesson, we're going to go over the indirect method for the operating section of the statement of cash flows. We're going to talk a little bit about the theory, then the mechanics, and then finally, we're actually going to do one towards the end of this lesson. So let's get started by understanding the indirect method or reviewing what we already know about the indirect method. So indirect method. So the indirect method starts with net income, and then from there, we kind of shake it down with some non-cash expenditures and the changes in our current assets and current liabilities. So that's kind of the crux of how we're gonna put this together. Now understand that this is the most common method of preparing the statement of cash flows on the operating section. And so that's why we're gonna spend some time on this because it's so important from a financial statement standpoint. Now, some of the mechanics of the indirect method is that at the end of the day, we're gonna start with net income and then we're gonna do a couple things to get us to this cash flows from operating using the indirect method. So the first thing is we're gonna add gains and losses. And actually, to be very honest, because you're just learning this, we're actually not going to spend time on this part. So just know that this is a part of the statement of cash flows from the, uh, from the operating section using the indirect method, but we're actually not gonna go over it um, in this lesson, that's more of an intermediate type of thing. So we're going to kind of skip that for now. Then we're going to make, we're going to figure out the changes in the current assets and current liabilities. And we're going to make those changes as adjustments to the net income. Once we have that, then we're going to add non-cash expenses such as depreciation and amortization. So that's what we're going to be doing mechanically. And that's a pictorial view of what we're doing. Now let's talk about kind of the crux of the mechanics of what we're trying to do. So from a high level, this is what we're trying to do. We're gonna start with net income, and then from there, we're gonna to add to it what we call non-cash expenditures. So think about it this way. If we were going to um, spend money or spend or have an expense, we would have to pay cash, right? So if we had to um, spend money or have an expense, it would follow now or in the future with cash, right? So if I bought a $5,000 TV, it would expect that I would have $5,000 in cash, either before, during, or after that transaction. Well, these non-cash expenditures are expenditures in which we put an expense on the income statement, but no cash actually goes out, okay? So no cash actually goes out, but we put the expenditures anyways. What would an example of that be? Well, there's really only one that you need to know at this point, and that is depreciation, okay? Think about it for a minute. Depreciation, we get to do a depreciation expense every year, but the cash doesn't go out in that year. The cash typically goes out when we first acquire the long-lived asset. So when we have depreciation expense, we're booking a depreciation expense, it lowers our net income like we spent the money, but remember that the money went out when we first purchased the asset, not necessarily five years later that we're taking the depreciation expense. So when we see depreciation expense, we're gonna add that back because that's a non-cash expense. We didn't have cash go out in order to report that expense. Now the cash that goes out is classified as an investing activity, not an operating activity. So we're not gonna cover that here because it's an investing activity rather than an operating. So we've got two separate things if you can do that in your head. The cash outflow will go in the investing activities but the depreciation is going to be an expense on the income statement, but no cash has actually gone out for that expenditure in this current moment. So we're gonna add back non-cash uh, expenditures. In our case, it's depreciation. Once we do that, we are going to add or subtract changes in the current assets and current liabilities section of the balance sheet. So we're going to look at the balance sheet, we're going to look at the changes, and then we're going to either add or subtract based on rules that I'm going to give to you in a few minutes or in a minute or so. Once we do that, that is going to give us our net cash flow provided by or used in the operating activities section. So that's a high overview. Now let's kind of dig a little deeper 
and see what this, especially the changes in current assets liabilities, what does that look like? So if I uh, expand it a little bit, this is what's going to happen. We're going to start with net income. And we're going to add back those depreciation or non-cash expenditures. Once we do that, we're going to take a look at the analysis of the difference between the beginning and the ending balance of all of our current assets and current liability. When we do that, we're going to put into one of four categories. So if we see that a current asset has decreased, we're going to add it to this number. If we see current assets increase, we are going to subtract it. So we're going to do the opposite of what happens for current assets. So if it goes up, we're going to subtract. If it goes down, we're going to add to the net income. Once we have the current assets, then it's to, then we need to do the current liabilities. So the current liabilities are going to work opposite of the current assets. So if the current liabilities decrease, we'll subtract. If they increase, we'll add. And that's going to give us our net cash flow provided by or used in our operating activities. So basically, once we do the analysis, then we go, okay, what happened to this current asset? Did it go up or down? If it went up, we'll subtract. If it goes down, we'll add. And then we'll look at our current liabilities. Did it go up? we'll add, if did it go down, we'll subtract, okay? And now the reason for this um, it has to do with what causes that change, what causes that difference between beginning and, and ending. If our current assets uh, increase, that means that, for instance, um, prepaid. If prepaid increases, that means that we must have paid more cash to get it to increase. So if we paid more cash, cash goes down because we're going to take cash out of our bank account and give it to the vendor who are prepaying. So because we're doing that, we have to decrease our net income because that wasn't a true expense. Okay, so that's kind of why we're doing that. Same thing with current liabilities. What's going to make a current liability go down? Well, cash has to go out. So in order for cash to go out, we're going to subtract that from our net income. So that's kind of what we're doing here in the expanded um, method of pro producing the in indirect method. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. If I can get there. There we go. Suppose your company's uh, income statement reports 160 uh, dollars of net income and $40 of cash dividends paid. Its comparative balance sheet indicates the following. So we've got this balance sheet, it's comparative, and we've got all of this, and it wants us to repair the operating activity section of the statement of cash flow. So the first thing that I would do is not go straight to the statement of cash flows and try to fill that out. The first thing that I would do is go straight to the balance sheet and then find all the changes, because we're going to use all the changes when we prepare the statement of cash flows, the operating section. So in this case, I'm going to look at all of this and I'm going to find the current assets and current liabilities and find the changes. Now, the first one here is cash, but we said that we only care about non-cash assets. So we're going to skip cash and we're going to straight to our accounts receivable. So what happens to accounts receivable? Accounts receivables increased by $100. What about inventory? Inventory decreased by 110. So decrease by 110. That's all of our assets. So we'll go to our liabilities. Our liabilities we have is just one, and that's wage payables. We see that wage payables went up, so it increased by $40. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are not going to do retained earnings because retained earnings is not a current asset or current liabilities. We're just looking at current assets and current liabilities. Once we've done that, then we can start to prepare the statement of cash flows. Now, just a helpful hint, this screen is going to go away, but we're going to put some of this information on the next screen so you can kind of see what it's looking like. So, But we need those three numbers, okay? So prepare the statement of cash flow. So we've got all of our increases and decreases on the right-hand side here. We only care about accounts receivable, inventory, and wages payable. So those are the three that we care about. And now we can start preparing this operating section. So below here, you'll see the operating activities section of the statement of cash flows. I've kind of broken it up to the way that it should look like on the statement of cash flows to make it a little bit easier for us to kind of prepare things. But it says that suppose your company's income statement reports 160 of net income, $40 of cash dividends paid, and its comparative balance sheet indicates the following. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this in. So the first thing that we start with is exactly what we did when I showed you the expanded kind of table. We're gonna start with net income. So I'm gonna put right here net income 
and my net income is 160, okay? Now, if you remember, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add back depreciation. If you notice here, we don't have any depreciation. So we're gonna go ahead and skip depreciation. We do have an example that we'll do at the very end where we'll have depreciation. You can see how that works. But in this case, there's no depreciation. So we'll go on to the next thing. So the next thing we're gonna to need to look at is we are going to need to look at, let me make sure I get this right, decreases in current assets. So we're gonna look at current assets and if there's any decreases, we are going to add them to our net income. So do we have any decreases in current assets? We do, we have one decrease in current assets and that is the inventory. So I'm going to add decrease in inventory. And this is gonna be for $110. So we're gonna add $110 to our net income. Now, why are we adding it? Because the decrease in net is in, in sorry, the decrease in inventory has to do with inventory decreasing. Therefore, we didn't actually have to pay for that inventory because that inventory was already in our books. So the inventory was already in our books. We, may, we might have paid cash beforehand and now we're taking advantage of that inventory by having it on hand. So we're going to add decrease in inventory. Then we need to look at any increases in current assets. We do have an increase in current assets. That is an accounts receivable. So we're going to subtract Uh, increase in accounts receivables in the amount of $100. Now in the statement of cash flows, whenever we're subtracting, or we have a negative number, we always wanna put the brackets um, in the number. So subtract the increase in accounts receivables. Now we can go on to the next part here. The next part is we're gonna see if there's any decreases in current liabilities. We don't have any decreases in liabilities, so we're gonna move on to the next one, which is increases in uh, current liabilities. We do have one $40 wages payable, that increased by $40. Because of that, we are going to add that to our wages, uh, sorry, we'll add that to our net income. So we'll add increase in wages payable in the amount of $40, okay? Why are we adding it? Well, the only way for in, uh, wages payables to increase is that we had an expense but we hadn't paid the payable, but that expense lowered our net income. Well, if we didn't actually pay it in cash, we need to bring that income back up. We need to bring the cash amount back up to compensate for the write-off that we took on the net income. So we're adding that cash back to net income because we really didn't uh, pay this wages payable expense yet because um, the wages payable increase. If it increases, we didn't actually pay cash. So once we have that, we're gonna add all of our numbers together and we're gonna get $210. So the net cash provided by operating activities was $210. Why $210? Well, it's because that we had $160 of net income and then we made adjustments to it based on increases and decreases of current assets and current liabilities. So 210 is our answer. And this is what our operating activities section of our um of our statement of cash flows using the indirect method would look like. So that's what we do there. The key thing to solving this is really following the key. If you have the key of the pluses and the minuses and the current assets and current liabilities, this is pretty much just plug and play. It's really super simple. So hopefully you understand how I use the key to prepare this. So that is the indirect method for the operating activities section. In the next lesson, we're gonna do one more example, but it's a little bit different. So we're actually gonna do the journal entries first, 
And now we're going to see the changes to maybe help you understand why we're adding and subtracting certain numbers in that operating activity. So the next lesson is really a conceptual understanding of why we're actually adding and subtracting. And the reason I put that after this instead of before this is because I want you to see the full picture and then see why we're doing certain things to the operating activities section. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.